Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Today, we're going to take a quick look at this 2010 Arbath 500. And this particular car has had the SASA kit fitted, which is Italian for SS. I believe that's how it's pronounced. From here on out, we are going to say SS. The SS kit is a two and a half thousand pound factory option that has to be fitted to the car by a dealer within 12 months of the car being registered. So you cannot buy this car as an SS from the factory. You have to buy an Arbar 500 and then you have this kit fitted. So what do you get for your two and a half thousand pound kit? I hear you ask. Well, you get 17 inch alloy wheels finished in a titanium color like this you get stiffer springs you get drilled and grooved discs which these look like they've been replaced and have gone back to standard ones which is a bit of a shame but in your kit drilled and grooved discs would be in there you also get a bmc air filter and an ecu update to take you from 135 brake horsepower to 160. On the inside, not much changes. I do like the Arbath do these black headlinings. It's one of my favorite parts about an Arbath. You get the nice leather coated cowl for the instrument cluster. You get this shifter gauge, which is cool, which includes this big kind of shift up, light up LED gauge, which is nice. Kind of just makes the whole thing a bit more fun. You get nice bucket seats. These ones in black with the red stripe. I don't think they're necessarily my favorite finish. I'm sure you can get leather ones and you can probably get uh, Alcantara ones, which would of course be my favorite. Um, but on the whole, I do like the interiors of these 500s. They are a nice place to be. They're comfortable. It's essentially a 4KA. Everything is nice, comfortable. It even fit kind of generously sized people in here as well. If you're tall, a bit bigger, uh, you're still going to fit in here and be comfortable, unlike some kind of hatches and sports cars. Okay, unfortunately, this is where my microphone died while recording, but it does give me the opportunity to test out a different microphone and to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, carsportformore.com. It's actually one of my own businesses, so in a sense, it's a sponsor of my entire life in the way that it helps me try to earn a living. And this car in the video today was actually bought through carsportformore.com from a subscriber, Julian, who's a really nice guy, drove down from Gloucester with the car so that we could buy it, give them a fair price for it, give it a good home, and also feature on the channel. So if you are looking to sell your car, please do visit carsboughtformore.com, enter all your information, we will get back to you with a price, we can collect the car from you, we do same day payments, we don't charge admin fees, and if it's something interesting, it might even end up on the channel. So with that said, let's get back to driving the car. The first thing I noticed with my driving position in here is that there's no reach adjustment on the steering wheel that's just up and down but nothing to bring the steering wheel closer to you so uh, I feel like I got my knees bent up but my hands are quite far stretched out to get a good grip on the steering wheel so that's a bit of a weird feeling it feels like I've got incredibly long legs and very short arms all of a sudden I don't think I have and maybe I can get myself more comfortable with a bit more time to play around with the seat but uh, yeah first impressions if there was a bit more reach adjustment on the steering wheel that would be just to solve the problem right off the get-go. The next thing I notice is if the air conditioning is turned off, the windscreen steams up, doesn't matter what temperature it's on, whether the windows are open or closed, if the air conditioning is off, the window will steam up. I don't know whether that's a standard 500 type thing, or whether this, it's this car in particular, but if it's an issue you've had before one of these, please do let me know in the comments. Uh, help me narrow down figuring out why the windscreen is steaming up. While these have got stiffer suspension, while I'm in normal driving mode at the moment, sport mode's not on, uh, it's still pretty civilised. This is a pretty bumpy road, as you can probably hear, and it doesn't feel like it's rattling it out completely. I mean, that was quite a decent pothole. Um, but compared to something, say, like the GT86, which definitely feels a lot firmer than this does, um, I can't really say I'm finding it particularly uncomfortable but I guess when we put it in sport mode and really get our foot downs on we'll find out just how stiff it feels. So this is where some of my favourite little lanes around here start so let's put it into sport mode. See how much of a difference that makes. See that is surprisingly quick. Jeez. 
Jesus Christ. Surprisingly lively for a little 1.4 turbo. God, it picks up so well. That's pretty convincingly powerful for a tiny little engine. You'd expect it to really kind of build and spool up, but I've put it into second gear now. We're off. We are off. Despite this not having the drilled and grooved discs like it should have, it's obviously been replaced with budget ones, it's not really going to affect the braking performance. And it actually is surprisingly good at braking. And one thing I particularly like on this is when you do give it heavy braking, it deploys the hazards for you. Quite a neat little touch, really. Now Julian, who sold the car to us, was quite keen to find out how it would do in a draggy run. So that's the next stop, I guess. We'll uh, find somewhere we can do a nice little 0-60 and see how we do. It should do 0-60 in 7.4 seconds. Well, we're nice and warmed up now. The tyres should be nice and warm. It is a dry but cold day. Let's see how we do. Okay, run number one. I am going to turn the air conditioning off. Build a few revs, but not so much. We will spin. Here we go. Oh, there is a wheel spin. Put this off now. Oh, dragged into a rut there. Right, that should be 60. It felt pretty good to me. Okay, so that was 8.4 seconds. Obviously, a second slower than we should have gone. To get a bit of wheel spin off the line, and while I've been looking for the traction control, I found that we've got the TTC button, which is torque transfer control google tells me and apparently it is an electronic type of limited slip diff okay second and final run sport mode ttc mode is on i'm gonna try and not give it so many revs and not spin off the line here we go reach 60 it felt good to me but it always does I'll check back with you in a minute and let you know how it went so we did improve it by 0.4 of a second that was an 8 second 0 to 60 um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong I think the car is quite capable of it as they usually are if there are any drag racers or 0 to 60 specialists out there Please do get in touch. I'd love to pay you to train me to be able to launch a car properly. Might even make for a good video, you never know. So there we have it. And the Arbath 500 SASA definitely gets my seal of approval. You wouldn't imagine that some stiffer suspension and 25 brake horsepower would make a huge difference to a car. But I guess a car that only started out with 135 brake horsepower and is only a smidge over a tonne. It really does make a difference and you can tell and this feels incredibly lively it feels like it's been it reminds me of dan's 400 brake horsepower fiesta that's currently zero brake horsepower because it's broken um just an angry little hornet that really just picks up and takes off straight away and is just yeah 
just super good fun. I really like it. My only complaint would be I wish there was some reach adjustment in the steering wheel because especially going around some of the tight corners, I really felt like I was really stretching to keep hold of this steering wheel. You, I mean, for me, you might tell me I'm wrong. I've always set up for a racing position. You want to have your legs pretty much extended with a little bit of room, with a little bit of bend in your knee, um, with the pedals flat to the floor as you're sat in your seat. And you want to be able to put your wrists on the steering wheel out straight like this so that you have a little bit of bend in your arm when you're cornering. That was what I was taught. That's how I like to set up. That's how I'm comfortable driving. In this, unfortunately, to be comfortable or to be able to drive the vehicle, I had to have my legs, legs quite bent up, meaning I had loads of extra play and my arms were fully extended, so not ideal. But a minor inconvenience for a car this cool. Um, and for, I think we've got this up for 6,250 quid. That is so much car for that money. I think we may have priced it as just a standard Arbath 500, to be honest. And maybe the reason we're getting quite a lot of interest is because we haven't really taken into account the two and a half thousand pound SASA kit. So if you are a drag expert, please contact me and teach me how to actually launch a car properly. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you're not new to the channel, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the car and leave me a like as always. And once you've done all that, I'll see you in the next video.